This is part three of the Watchman Stove Do-It-Yourself Kit. We're going to attach the feed tube to the main burn tube. And the easiest way I've found to do this is have a nice flat surface, put the main burn tube on its back, and after you have welded your, your air plenum plate or your air divider plate in place, you can line up where the uh, two pieces need to attach. If you lay it on its side, like if you rotate this 90 degrees, you run the risk of having one seam uh, tight and then one seam where it has a larger gap. Uh, the reason for that is just the natural way that six inch tube is. Not all sides are like perfectly square. So if you have it laying on its side, just, uh, I mean, you can do it that way. Just be uh, cognizant of the fact that that can happen. And this is probably the easiest way to make sure um, that the joints on each side are equal. Um, you can also use a uh, tape measure to make sure you're square on the ends just by measuring from the end to the bottom of the feed tube and measuring from the top to the top of the feed tube. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and tack this up. So I've got my MIG set for 3 16 mild steel. I'm running 35 thousandths thick ER70S6 solid wire with uh, argon CO2 mix at 20 PSI or CFM, I guess. CFM? Yeah, I think that's right. It's been a while, people. All right, let's, let's, uh, let's get going on this. Okay, you can see where I made several heavy tacks. One at each corner. And then a couple more tacks in the center of each section where the two pieces of six inch square tube connect together. With the stove in the upright position, you can get a better understanding of how this lays out. It's pretty simple. I have it uh, temporarily resting on a uh, brick from a fireplace just for just to set it up in this position for a better a better view. But the biggest thing is just make it so that the top of the feed tube on the, on the inside is flush with the uh, factory cut in the main burn tube. And this is what it should look like from the top rear of the interior. And again, this is just tacked in place at this moment. You always want to tack everything before you commit to fully welding. And then even when you do commit to fully welding, you want to, you know, like weld your corners in really good first, because if you just start laying down a continuous weld, like let's say you just wanted to do a continuous weld from like, like here down, uh, this is going to pop open right here with just those tacks. So anyway, sorry about having, uh, no weld sequences up to this point, but we're uh, working with what we have at the moment. Okay, more in a bit. Okay, so I've made the corners, uh, the corner tacks, strengthened them up a little bit, giving it about an inch of weld on each corner and burned in the tack of each corner. So, pretty content with how this is. Let's see, that's the end of the table you see. There we go. Okay, but you can eyeball things, make sure you're aligned. Of course I did that before I started laying down any heavier welds. 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and see. So now you're safe where you can flip it back and forth and uh, weld it without it getting out of uh, your original alignment. All right, um, I'm going to end this segment and then I'll show you the welds, uh, the completed welds on the next installment. All right, y'all, have a great day. Talk to you soon.